Hey everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. We're so happy to see you. In today's video, Kathleen is sharing a treasured family recipe handed down from our paternal grandmother, whom we lovingly referred to as Grandma Bunny. We're so happy you could join us. Now let's get into Kathleen's kitchen. Hey everyone, many of you know, if you've been watching our channel for a while, that I live in the home that was our Grandma Bunny's house. And my husband and I um, spent five years renovating it after she passed away, and we now love it and live in it full time. Our Grandma Bunny was a pretty special person. She could do anything. She could knit, she, could, she was a, a professional seamstress, she um, could crochet, she was a wonderful cook, a wonderful baker, she just did it all. And we all, Patty, Paula, and myself, learned so much from our Grandma Bunny. Christmas time was a particularly fun time for her. She used to start, I don't even, probably in October. Well, she really worked all year round, but she started with the cooking par portion of this in October by collecting um, groceries that she needed for, for her signature um, bakes and things that she made. Um, and she would pick them up as they went on sale. And she made mountains of fabulous different kinds of fudge and peanut butter balls and um, caramel popcorn and snack crackers and salad dressing. And she made her own Kahlua. We always got a bottle of Kahlua. And one of the things one year that she made for all the, all of the women um, in her family. So each of my sisters, my mom got one of these. And I also had cousins, um, girl cousins, and they got one and an aunt who got one. And what she did one year was she gave each of us this very special recipe box. She bought the, the little wooden box. We have a wooden craft store here in town. She painted it. She put the little decals on it. Um, and every one of us got one of these. And what is really cool is not just the box, but what's inside. So what she did was she wrote down all of the recipes that were sort of her, she was known for with us. All of the recipes that she'd tried and true, and recipes that she had given to us um, or had served us when we came over. And she hand wrote you know, a recipe card or a little index card um, for each of these recipes and put them in the box. And she did this for, I believe it was probably seven of us. So she made seven of these boxes, wrote out seven copies of the recipes. And this was a Christmas present one year. So my sisters and I thought it would be really fun to pull out an old Grandma Bunny recipe and uh, share it with you. And there were so many of them. Lots of them were desserts because she she did um, was a beautiful baker. But there were others. There were salads, um, some main dishes, um, some some of her fa like her salad dressing, her Kahlua, um, she made by scratch. And um, the fun thing is just going through this box and remembering, oh yes, we had this, or when she brought it over, or when we made it together. And um, what I decided to make and share with you is it was one of her, it's not really a salad, I guess it's more of a condiment. I'm not really sure. It's like a pickle, but she called them copper pennies and they are carrots um, that are, you eat them like pickles because they're in a, in a sauce or in a, uh, a marinade that is absolutely delicious. And they're really good as a side with like mashed potatoes um, and meatloaf or chicken, um, but you know if you there's some juice in that. If you kind of sop it up with the mashed potatoes, it's really really delicious. Or rice. Um, so that is what I'm going to make for you. But you know, 
it's so fun to look back on these and all of these have her, her handwriting. She was a lefty and her handwriting is very um, distinguishable. I could recognize it anywhere. And I, you know, I, it's just a really cool thing. And I thought what I'm going to do for my own daughter is um, to copy these. And I think I will just photocopy them. So she actually has the original handwriting. I'm going to ask my own mom, her grandmother, for her signature um, recipes, one of which we shared here on Relatively Refined, which she made her famous pumpkin roll, and then some of my own. And I thought, what a neat thing it would be to pass on several generations, three generations down to a fourth generation um, for my daughter, who is who is a wonderful cook. Um, she's she's an actually actually a, a very accomplished uh, cook and baker as well. So. Join me in the kitchen as we make Grandma Bunny's Copper Pennies. Okay, so let's make our Grandma Bunny's Copper Pennies. I have the recipe here and I will read it to you as we do each ingredient. It calls for two pounds or two pound bag of carrots cleaned and sliced thin. So we are going to start by peeling these carrots and slicing them. And she used a special tool. She didn't just slice the carrots with a knife. She used a special little gadget. It's this little gadget right here. So when you do cut them into this thinner slices, it has a little bit of a ripple to it. So it's not just a, a flat cut. And she always used this little gadget when she made her copper pennies. So two pounds of carrots, these are pretty big carrots. And it looks like there are about seven large carrots to be um, peeled and sliced. Okay, so we will slice these. And while I'm doing this, I have put a pot of water onto boil because we are going to cook the carrots down not so that they're well cooked. They're just almost like if it was pasta, it would be al dente. So just barely um, tender. You don't want them mushy. So we'll do these. And then we pop those in the hot, in the boiling water for a few minutes to get them to that al dente stage. And while they are cooking, you can work on the marinade. Okay, and I will show you how that little gadget works. So you can see what I'm talking about with the ripples. So you take this and you just push down on it. You can see that it has almost like a little bit of a crinkle cut to it so it's not a flat uh, carrot slice and it just gives it a little more um, appeal because this is like a pickle you will eat these you know um, although they're slightly cooked they've been marinating in the marinade and they're kind of like a a pickled carrot so I will continue to do those and put those in the boiling water and then when I come back we will start on the marinade so before I put those in the water, you can see here, they they look almost like a pickle chip, um, but they're carrots. And you can see those ridges a little bit better. So these are going to go into the boiling water for, um, you know, I'm not really sure. It doesn't say on the recipe, but I'm thinking probably not much more than five minutes. Okay, so the carrots are in the boiling water and I've adjusted the camera angle a little bit so that you could see actually what, what it looks like as I'm pouring things into the bowl. So the next two ingredients are one green pepper sliced thin and one onion sliced thin. So we will go ahead and add those to our bowl. This 
seeds out. I'm going to cut this in half and then just put try to do very thin half slices of this pepper. If you had a mandolin or, or some sort of a slicer, that would probably work well to get it thin. I'm just trying my best to get it as thin as I can with a knife that probably could use some sharpening. Okay, we'll add all of that to the bowl. It does not say to chop the pepper. Um, and as I recall from memory, she had, you know, the rings, little pepper rings or half rings in there. So I'm gonna leave them, looks like they're on the larger side, but if my memory serves, that's, that's what they looked like in her jars of copper pennies. Okay, we'll add that. And I don't like to waste anything, so I'm gonna cut up the, the cap. You could also use your food processor to slice, but it's only one pepper and one onion, so rather than pull that out and have to wash it, <laughs> I'm just gonna do it by hand. Okay, so there's the green pepper. And then the onion, just a plain yellow onion. Again, sliced thin. This one has a little bit of a funny spot on it, so I'm going to cut some of it off. Put that in there. Well, that will go in the compost. Break that up a little bit. So it's a little thick, I won't use that. Okay, so those are ready. I do like to pull them apart so that you don't get a huge chunk of onion. Okay, so we've got the pepper and the onions in there. And then it says to add one can of tomato soup. So I <laughs> I just use Campbell's tomato soup. I could not find just the regular old Campbell's soup. This one says healthy request. There was low salt. Um, I'm sure my grandmother used the regular old Campbell's tomato soup, but this is as close as I could find. And you just dump that in. whole can. All right, I'm going to get a scraper and I'm going to check on the carrots. They're doing okay. They're not quite ready. So we'll get the rest of that soup out of here. And to that, you add a half a cup of salad oil, which in her case was vegetable oil, not olive oil. 
and a half a cup. Okay. Next, you add a cup of sugar. These are pickled, but they're a sweet pickle. Add a cup of sugar, which seems like a lot, but really, really good. And then I'm going to stir that up. Gonna, the carrots, when they're done, are going to get mixed into this. And you end up, you know, putting them in a jar and then keeping them in the refrigerator. And the longer they sit there, the more marinated they do get. Um, after the sugar, we are going to add three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. There's the pickling part. And a teaspoon of prepared mustard. I don't remember if she used what kind of mustard. I had Dijon, so I'm just gonna use a teaspoon of that. And I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna put it in. And then finally, just some salt and pepper to taste. And because the soup that I used was the healthy version, I'm guessing that it has not a lot of salt, so I am going to add salt. And then stir that all up. All right, I'm gonna go check on the carrots and see if we can add them to this. Okay, so our carrots were done. They were crunchy but you could bite through them, no problem. It wasn't like they were like, they were not raw, but they were also not mushy. So they were perfectly done. So what you do is you drain them and then you pour them into the marinade mixture and stir that up. Try to cover all of the carrots with the tomato, the marinade. Um, they're just like a, a little bit of a side, I, I don't really want to call it a salad, but it could act like that. So once you think you've got them pretty well covered, all you do is you put them into a jar and keep them in the refrigerator. I have a couple of ball jars, larger ball jars. I'm just going to add them in here. Trying to get, you know, some of the green pepper, enough of the marinated, some of the onion, or the marinade sauce. Looks good. And let's see if I can pour a little of the more of the marinade in there. Okay. And bring that on the edge of the jar. Cap it. And there you have Grandma Bunny's Copper Pennies. I hope you had as much fun as we did going through Grandma Bunny's recipe box. And uncovering her copper pennies recipe. It's a really great dish as a side dish to bring to a potluck or to bring over to somebody's house just as a thank you. So again, thank you for watching and I hope you give it a try, Grandma Bunny's Copper Pennies.